Our transportation system is made up of three things, vehicles, pedestrians, and infrastructure. This so-called system was never systematically developed. It just happened, and it didn't work. And it still doesn't work. We cannot expect to fix the whole system just by replacing the human behind the wheel with a computer. Cars are only part of the problem. Driverless cars could make congestion worse over the next 30 years. And it's not just about congestion. And safety. It's also about bad transit. Pavements that cover half of suburban real estate. Crumbling infrastructure that gets worse every year. And it's about jobs. In short, ladies and gentlemen, it's about the very quality of life. When I was chairman of the Airport Consultants Council, we found all kinds of improvements could be made if we could move people around airports in small pods. Then we found these pod systems existed. They're called Personal Rapid Transit, PRT. In 2005, I decided to devote the remainder of my professional career to PRT. We are now working on the next generation of PRT that will have speeds up to 100 kilometers an hour and line capacities up to 20,000 passengers per hour for about one quarter the cost of rail. PRT systems are in public service around the world. They separate vehicles from pedestrians and are extremely safe. Passengers ride seated in small driverless vehicles that travel on dedicated guideways. Small vehicles require small infrastructure, which is relatively unobtrusive and inexpensive. Numerous offline stations located on sidings allow non-stop travel and result in short walking distances. Waiting times are typically less than a minute. However, first generation PRT is relatively slow with low to medium capacity Higher speeds and capacities with short stations were previously thought impossible. Next generation PRT solves all three issues. Speeds are up to 100 kilometers an hour, and one guideway has the capacity of about seven freeway lanes. The to get there vehicle holds four passengers and is battery powered. It runs on rubber tires with top speeds of 40 kilometers an hour. It has been in public operation since 2010. Line capacity is two to 3,000 passengers per hour. Reliability is over 99.5%. Ultra's Heathrow pod serves Terminal 5 at London's Heathrow International Airport. It is also battery powered and rubber tired. It holds four to six passengers and has similar capacity to the to get there system. Although a next generation system is being developed with much higher speeds and capacities. This system went into public service in 2011. This is the station at T5. This is one of the stations in a parking lot. Average waiting time is less than 30 seconds. The Vector system went into public operation in 2013. It runs on rails and gets its power from the wayside or a third rail. It holds about nine passengers and top speed is 70 kilometers an hour with maximum capacity around 7,000 
passengers per hour per direction. The Moji tram pod holds six passengers and is battery powered with rubber tires running on rails. It has top speeds around 60 kilometers an hour and maximum line capacity of 5,000 passengers per hour with the ability to increase this by coupling vehicles together as seen here. The TubeNet transit system is being developed here in Hangzhou, China. Each vehicle holds two passengers. It uses rubber tires and wayside or third rail power. This picture shows how solar panels can be attached to the guideway in a way that shades the vehicles. One meter wide solar panels running the length of the guideway can generate most of the energy needed by the system. Batteries in the vehicles help store energy for nighttime use. Stations can incorporate small businesses below the platform. If necessary, neighborhood stations can have very small footprints. Unlike trains, stations can be sized to meet demand. Here you see a large station with the through guideways carrying vehicles non-stop above the vehicle stopped in the station. This is a floor plan for a station with 12 berths. Note the storage space for ready vehicles. Turnaround guideways at each end allow vehicles to change directions if needed. Now we will see an animation of a four-bay station showing how it could be organized to encourage ride-sharing. We will also see how passengers could choose to pay for a vehicle to themselves and have very short waiting with non-stop travel. Alternatively, they could choose to pay less, wait up to, say, five minutes, share a ride, and possibly have to make an intermediate stop or two. This ability to allow passengers to match the level of service they receive to the amount they're willing to pay is relatively unique to PRT. It can help promote social equity.
Being mostly elevated, PRT can easily be retrofitted to existing streets without requiring additional right-of-way. It only needs to remove 10 to 20 percent of traffic for congestion to all but vanish. Stations can serve legacy transit systems, helping boost their ridership. They can be attached to buildings, providing direct access to jobs and businesses. Vehicles could leave the guideway to travel on roads to individual homes. In new developments, homes can be clustered around stations, giving door-to-door -door service and mostly eliminating the need for roads. Imagine living and working in a park-like setting, yet being in the midst of a dense city with on-demand high-speed mobility for you and your entire family. Imagine. This is not just some vision for the far distant future. First generation systems can solve today's problem. Like the red line extension in Chicago, four stations for $2.3 billion. This requires massive government subsidies. PRT would have 10 times as many stations, five times the riders, cost one third and turn a profit. More importantly, it would revitalize this entire neighborhood. PRT eliminates congestion and improves safety and mobility. Fairbox revenues pay for all capital and operating costs. New PRT systems result in new businesses and jobs without the need for government subsidies. Communities with PRT systems will have thriving economies and happy citizens. PRT is the transportation infrastructure solution of the future that can be implemented today. Even very large cities will be able to move and breathe.